Go, shoo. Oh, so, so this is my image that I call Solana Beach Cliffs, which was taken at Tide Park in Solana Beach, California. Printed on canvas in just black and white. And as you can see, I taped off already part of it, because what I want to do, I want to like paint over this sky. I mean, I like the sky and I've colored it this way before, but I want to paint in like a new sky from scratch. So let's do it. So first I'll gesso in the sky, like white gesso. So we have a nice basis for the paint. I'll speed it up because it goes to pretty long. So you saw I also went over the palm tree, but at the very end I will paint in that palm tree. This is the, these are the clouds. It was a, a shot from our backyard one evening, and that's what I would like to kind of paint in here, like very loosely. So I'm mixing phthalo blue with a lot of white and a little bit of orange just to desaturate it a tad. And then with a, what is it, one and a half inch brush or so, I will start painting in the, the blue in the sky, starting at the top. And then I work my way down, changing the colors, adding a nice gradient, and at some point uh, the clouds. And also make sure I, I put paint on the on the sides of the canvas because this was a like a gallery wrap, and then I would like to continue also with those colors on the sides. So this is a acrylic from Golden. It's not going to be a perfect blend and you will definitely see the transitions, but that's kind of the point I want to do here. I want to, I want to more or less give it like an impressionist look to the sky. So I also don't mind that there will be brush strokes. And you will definitely see those. So now I'm going to add the next layer again phthalo blue and white, but this time a little bit more white. So we're, so we're going to see a change in the, in, in the color now, in the value that is. That's a gradient for the sky. And you can see I'm actually not doing a lot of effort to try to blend it. I probably could have because uh, I, I added a lot of water to the paint. But I actually do want to see the brush strokes this time. And I don't mind seeing transitions between the different layers of color that I add. And here I also added a tad of alizarin crimson which makes it slightly more towards purple
and I'm kind of figuring out where that big cloud is going to be and we'll go around that because the, the cloud is going to be oranges and purples a little bit of yellow It's funny, there's also houses under that tape, the masking tape that I put on. But they will be preserved. And the, the doing this tape was a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. Because now you get a nice, like, sharp transition going from photo to painted in sky. So I'm kind of outlining the clouds now, the, the the major ones. It's going to be a big giant cloud in the middle and then a few uh, smaller ones underneath and they will also have like the sun shining on them from from the bottom with a little bit of darker values on the top of the clouds. So I had this photo of, of the of the clouds from my backyard displayed on an iPad that's to the side, painting in the clouds by using that as a reference. It's just a simple, small, flat brush that I'm using to add this color here. These outlines. Probably a quarter of an inch or so. Mixing up another color, always a lot of white. This is titanium white, by the way. And I want a very, just as in the photo, a very light blue sky more towards the, the horizon behind the clouds, between the clouds. And I'll speed that up because that's again a lot of the same. And then it's time to mix up some colors. So the top of that bigger cloud is going to be nice and dark. We'll make it a little bit darker as we go towards the bottom. So I'm, I keep adding a little bit more alizarin crimson to the mix. Still the phthalo blue, a lot of white, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and you can see now that it's turning towards that more purple. And I'm putting it on very roughly because I do want to see the brush strokes here, as I mentioned earlier. Again, more 
I've got the leather and crimson. Which I also want on some of the other clouds. And then the next step is to like very roughly add some going towards more orange and a lighter orange. probably could have added a little bit more of a gradient just as, as I did with the big cloud to these smaller ones. I mean adding a little bit more darker blue to the top but it, it looks fine. It's, it's okay. Again, I'm not doing, trying to do an exact copy of that photo. I just had to have some kind of idea what to do here. This this canvas has been uh, sitting around probably for more than a year. I printed it, I don't know, forever ago. And I just didn't know what to do with this. I, I, I knew I wanted to do something with the sky, something different. Like I said in the intro, I have painted it and colored it with the sky that's there. But uh, for, for this particular one, I wanted to do something completely different. And I was thinking of doing like an abstract sky, uh, adding colors with like a palette knife, which I've done before. And then at some point, don't know how I came to doing this. I think I was going to, through some of my, just my, that I took with my iPhone from my backyard and then saw this one and decided that would be a good look for uh, for this photo that I call Solana Beach Cliffs. So I added more white to the mix, so we're getting a very light purple now. And also making sure I'm, I'm not adding it too cleanly in straight lines. So now we kind of see the, the fluffiness of the clouds underneath. Like the, like the impression of the sun that's shining underneath the clouds. So now I add more orange. This is cadmium orange. And then more white just to make the existing mix lighter. And I'm putting fluffs of it on the big cloud and then a little bit more on the others. And then I take a fan brush, because if you can see in the original photo, like there were streaks of those clouds going up from the bottom. So I kind of want to uh, imitate that by wiping up my fan brush from the bottom of that big cloud. Paint's still wet, so 
that can still be easily done. And something really weird happened actually when I was painting this this guy. Like I was doing this in my garage and I had the, the big garage door open and suddenly one bee came in. There you could there went there was one. And then another one came and another one and another one and I don't know why, but there were like fifteen bees flying around in the garage, so I had to and I don't know what they were looking for, so I, I close the garage door, open the side door, turn off all the lights, and then that, and that helped. <laughs> then, then they actually all left. And it hasn't happened before that or after since, so I don't know what, why, why that was. Anyway. So I add a lot more white, a little bit of yellow. And so it's nice and very light right above the horizon. Like the sun really is, is out of the picture, it's to the right. We're looking towards south. And then the front part is always taking the tape off. And we have a nice straight line on the ocean. And then all the other parts where the houses are also on the bluffs. Um, are nicely, are nice and clean. So now it's time to color the rest of the photo. So I still do that also with acrylics and a lot of acrylic medium. This is a golden glass glazing liquid. And then I'm using three colors, which are displayed here. And we're going to make mixes with burnt sienna. So these three colors here all will get burnt sienna. But in one of them, I will add some orange, like this one here. And then this one will get a little bit of yellow. So we're getting slightly variations of that burnt sienna. And then this one I will keep just as is. And then with a small brush I start adding those colors to the back, work my way to the front, and then change up the colors. And I want to keep it very light in the distance. As you can see in the photo, it's very light there. There was, it's like mist of the ocean or maybe a little bit of fog that was present. So the distance is very, very light. There's a very strong atmospheric perspective here, which I want to retain with, with my colors. So I'm, I'm starting with that burnt sienna yellow mix and add that towards the back and as you saw there's a lot of uh, acrylic medium that I'm using so it's very transparent in the beginning when I was trying this out for the first time on canvas I used a lot of water didn't realize I was actually like destroying the paint by using so much water so it looked very blotchy it didn't look good and then I realized that it's best to like thin it thin the colors with acrylic medium the acrylic medium looks white and it's actually slightly opaque when it's wet but it turns completely transparent I also use that acrylic medium to add to some of my photos that I want to color with either Marshall Photo Oils or my own mixes of oil glazes. First add that acrylic medium 
to the photo, let it dry, and then you can paint over that nicely. Like, or glaze over it nicely, I should say. So I'm changing up colors. Now I'm adding some of that burnt sienna orange mix as we approach the front. And then it's always nice to mix up the colors a little bit. So I'm adding some of that orange mix also to the yellows that are on the back. And in the very front I'm using the, the pure burnt sienna glazing mix. I have colored this image many different ways. This one, because it's now it's sunset-y, I added more warmer colors to the bluffs and, um, and the beach than what I normally do. I think I shot the image around noon or so. You could see the sun is actually in the original photo. It's in there. It's in the right top corner. So again, it's a lot of the same, just adding that color to the beach. And then the next thing I want to do, I want to um, like put a little bit of those reflections of those clouds in the, in the wet sand. So I'm taking some alizarin crimson again. And add that to one of the mixes that was with burnt sienna and orange and especially like the reflection of the big cloud I'm adding that here to the wet sand now And I thought, oh, it's nice to add some of that color also to the bluffs, because it is a little bit more red. Again, it breaks up the single color on the bluffs, adding some variation to it. And by using similar colors between the sky that was that was painted on with opaque acrylics and using the same paints for the for the glazes here, it's still all tied together. The the two parts of it, this is like half a painting, half photo, half hand colored photo. They don't they're not too different. And then a little bit of like phthalo blue acrylic medium mix will look nice as a reflection also on the beach here. And then I'm also using that same mix for the ocean for the distance. Still would like to put it on very lightly here in the far distance. And also I don't want to go over the breaking waves. I would like to keep that white.
I also wanted to break up the colors a little bit in the ocean, so by adding a little bit of yellow to the existing Taylor Blue mix, you get a like more of an aquamarine. And I love how the ocean turns that aquamarine at these beautiful sunsets. And then of course now that paint in the sky, that, that was still wet, so I had to be very careful. I couldn't tape it off. I guess I could have waited a little bit, tape it off again, and paint in or color in the ocean. However, I was careful enough and I didn't have the patience for it to wait that long, so I wanted to get this piece done in one day. Really make sure that you use a lot of acrylic medium because if it if these colors become too opaque, only slightly transparent, you lose a lot of the detail in your photo, which you, you want to keep obviously. Unless, of course, you want to go for that particular look, but here I really wanted to have like to see the photo that's underneath. I always take a tiny bit of theta blue because it's a strong color. It will make your uh, glaze, blue glaze, opaque very quickly. Not too much color, too saturated. And I was pretty happy with how this turned out. So I'm also just going over the foam because I, I like that the way that blue looked. So now it's time to paint in back that palm tree that I gessoed over in the beginning. That, that tree adds, here it is, that's what it looked like with the old sky. And that palm tree really adds to this photo, I think. It draws your eye. So I wanted to have that back. So with a small flat brush, I made a little mix of like black and burnt sienna. So we get a very dark burnt sienna that I paint the silhouette of the palm tree with first. And again I have that photo of the original the, fo the original photo. I again had that on my iPad here. I was drawing the palm tree with by using that as a, as a reference again. Because I could have decided to paint anything else, anything else in here too, like a regular tree, maybe, maybe multiple palm trees, but I liked the way it was. making sure the palm fronds are all in the right places. There's a few hanging down, a few healthy ones. I still want wanted to have this look a little bit more realistic. And then because we are, we are like doing a sunset scene here, I will also make sure there will be some brighter colors to the right of the palm tree, which was not 
originally like that in the photo, as you can see. The sun was more behind it. And the sky actually was dry at this point. Which was good, which makes it easier to add this palm tree. Just filling in the middle a little bit more to add it a little bit more black to make it a little darker in certain places. And you can see it here too. I'm also putting in a little bit of that structure of the of the palm tree. The trunk. Add a little bit more of structure to the trunk of the of the tree. Now we're mixing some, some white and some orange and burnt sienna to put in the highlights on the palm tree. So that means to the to the right of the trunk. And again also, so I, actually I took a smaller brush here. There's gonna be some detailed work here. And I also again want to like represent again a little bit of that structure that exists on a on a palm tree trunk. So I work my way up the trunk and then add a little bit of highlights to the palm fronds. And the trees also nice became nicely part of this image again, especially putting on some of those highlights to the right as we have a sunset. And that was it.